Hello, I'm Shauna Lawhorn with the League of Women Voters. Along with the League and SFGov TV, I'm here to discuss Proposition D, a ballot measure that will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 6th. The city collects a tax on gross receipts from many businesses operating in San Francisco. The current tax rates on gross receipts range from 0.075% to 0.65%. Cannabis businesses are subject to the tax on gross receipts. Businesses with $1 million or less in total gross revenue within San Francisco are generally exempt from the gross receipts tax. Some other businesses, including certain nonprofit organizations, banks, and insurance companies, are also exempt. The city collects gross receipts and other taxes on businesses that meet specified conditions relating to activities within San Francisco. Increasing tax revenue spending limits requires San Francisco voter approval. Beginning January 1, 2021, Proposition D would impose a new gross receipts cannabis business tax of 2.5% on the first $1 million of gross revenues from the retail sale of cannabis products, 5% on gross revenues over $1 million from the retail sale of cannabis products, 1% on the first $1 million of gross revenues from cannabis business activities other than the retail sale of cannabis products, and 1.5% on gross revenues over $1 million from cannabis business activities other than the retail sale of cannabis products. These additional taxes would not apply to revenues from the retail sale of medicinal cannabis, the first $500,000 of gross revenues, revenues from certain activities indirectly related to cannabis businesses, or some businesses exempt from the city's gross receipts tax, such as certain nonprofit organizations. The Board of Supervisors could decrease or increase the tax rate up to a maximum rate of 7% in each category. By a two-thirds vote of the board, the tax in any category may be increased up to 1% each year. Revenues from this additional tax would go into the general fund, which the city may use for any public purpose. Proposition D would increase the city's annual tax revenue spending limit for four years. In addition, beginning January 1, 2019, Proposition D would modify the city's tax code to apply many of the city's business taxes to some businesses that receive more than $500,000 in gross revenue in San Francisco and do not have a physical presence in the city. A yes vote means, if you vote yes, you want to impose new cannabis business taxes and apply many of the city's business taxes to some businesses that do not have a physical presence in the city. A no vote means, if you vote no, you do not approve these taxes and modifications. I'm here with Sophia Kittler with Yes on D and a proponent of the measure. Hello. Thank you for having me. We're also joined by Richie Greenberg. He is a community advocate and he's an opponent of the measure. Hi. Hi. Nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. We're going to start with opening statements and we'll begin with Sophia. Great. Well, Prop D is a progressive, tiered, and data-driven tax on cannabis businesses in San Francisco. San Francisco is actually the last major city in California to pass a cannabis tax, which is a power that was given to us under the Prop 64 vote in November of 2016. And we've had the opportunity to learn from other cities, watch what everybody else is doing, work really closely with industry members and San Francisco residents, and what we have crafted is the lowest, most progressive tax of its kind in the state. We built Prop D on five basic principles. One, we must prioritize affordable patient access. Two, the heaviest tax burden should fall on the highest earning businesses. Three, we need to keep highly skilled union jobs here in the city. Four, we must support small businesses and particularly quote unquote equity entrepreneurs. And five, the data driven flexibility is essential for not overburdening the industry as it starts to grow and just kind of comes into compliance. So the cannabis industry is brand new. They're still learning to operate in the legal market, and it, it frankly needs help to get there. Um, and Prop D is going to generate between seven and ten million dollars annually, um, starting in 2021 when it goes into effect. Um, that can be spent on education around the effects of cannabis, on compassion programs, on equity business incubation, workforce development, and public safety and enforcement. 
It's endorsed by the Democratic Party, by the SF Labor Council, by Alice B. Toklas and Harvey Milk, the San Francisco Equity Group, just to name a few. Um, so property is a fair tax focused on hiring in cannabis businesses and will help us build a more socially responsible industry. Great. Richie. Hi, thank you. So um, I came on board with uh, opposing this Prop D um, fairly uh, late in the uh, process uh, after reviewing the information that was presented uh, for uh, what, what seemed to be a, a logical tax, what seemed to be something that would be supportive of certain industries, uh, but in fact it is not. Uh, in my opposition, I found that there are multiple problems with how it's being packaged and sold to voters in a very negative, very misleading way. And I personally have uh, actually gone and submitted a challenge to the law. Uh, it is being packaged in a way that misleads potential voters to uh, think that they are getting a benevolent, uh, that the city would get some benevolent um, benefit from this, which they would not. Uh, it's a general tax, and I look forward to getting more into depth now as we discuss this today. Okay, thank you. Well, that does lead me into our first question, which is very simple. Why do you oppose this measure? Okay. So um, after looking at the legal uh, text and what the wording is, uh, it very specifically states that it is a general tax. It is uh, revenues that would be raised would go to the general fund with no specific earmarking of where it's going to be spent. Uh, then looking at what was submitted to go into the, um, the voter pamphlet, which we will all receive, uh, the statements in there are, are completely not in, in, in sync with what the intention of it is. And as uh, was mentioned, uh, four or five different potential uses of where the where it would go, and that is not true. Going funds going into the general fund can be used for any purpose that the city wants, including things that are unpopular, and uh, so that plus a few other uh, reasons is is the main reason why I'm against this. To you, Sophia, why do you support this measure? Um, so I support this measure because I do believe that the cannabis industry is. You know, something that the California voters have supported, something that San Francisco voters have supported. Um, and we do want to bring them in compliance with kind of state and local laws. Um, but they need some help getting there. Um, we don't really, we can't really anticipate what it's going to look like six months from now, three months from now, or three years from now, five years from now. Um, because it is a totally nascent industry and it is absolute learning. So we really need that flexibility to understand what is going on. And I think that this tax is really built with that flexibility in mind. To um, Richie's point, that is one of the reasons that it goes to the general fund. But I think that this is a tax that supports the general fund, supports our needs, but will help the cannabis industry really grow and become a robust, legitimate industry. Okay, thank you. And so next question back mm -hmm. to you, Sophia. Is there a plan for the money raised by this proposition? And if so, what is that plan? So currently, it does go into the general fund. Um, the way we have been messaging this and I, is that these are things that um, we have identified revenue needs that we believe this could support. We believe that general fund taxes are good public policy and that set-asides really constrain our budget too much. Um, and, but we, you know, the city has built a really transparent, thorough budget process that allows for lots of public input. Um, can you repeat the rest of the question? <laughs> the, the plan for the money raised. Yeah, so we have, you know, as I've said, we have a number of needs. Um, we would like to kind of, as we did with the sugary beverage tax, create an advisory board, um, perhaps through Supervisor Fewer's commission on advising where that money should go. But we believe that these five issues, um, education, compassion programs, equity business incubation, workforce development, and public safety are the biggest needs. And we don't really think that there's an appetite to draw away from, say, homelessness funding or mental health services um, in order to fund that. So that's why we need this tax. Great. And to you, Richie, um, the opposition's view of the plan for the money raised by this revenue. So you cannot have earmarking. So what has been brought up cannot be specified how it's going to be used. Um, there are those out there that love reading these feel-good buzzwords, thinking that, oh, this tax is going to be used to support A, B, C, D, and E. But by definition, it cannot 
be specified and earmarked. So um, in as much as you have people who would love to have a beneficial use in their minds of what would be beneficial to the, uh, the community, the same funds that are, are raised could instead be going to something that's unpopular, say, buying tasers, or to paying for raises that the city hall had, uh, and the mayor uh, had, just, uh, uh, had just given a raise just a couple of months ago, I believe. And so it could be used to pay for raises of city employees or for pensions. So uh, trying to focus on how would I like the money to be used, you can't specify that. Great. Closing remarks, and we'll start with Sophia. Great. Um, so I, I think I would just really point to, um, we have eight, this was voted, put on the ballot with eight votes from the Board of Supervisors. Um, we believe that it is, we have a robust, transparent budget process that really understands what the priorities are, what the needs are, um, and I really believe that the tax, the, the voters of San Francisco understand that we have the power and the responsibility to keep the cannabis industry um, responsible, socially engaged, and that this is a way to do that. This is, again, the lowest, most progressive tax in the state, um, and it has been built with industry stakeholders. Um, Mayor London Breed, uh, Diane Feinstein, um, Congresswoman Pelosi have all supported it. Um, again, we have the Democratic Party's endorsement, and I think that this is really, you know, a, a responsible manner to think about an, bringing a brand new industry that has operated in the black market for a really long time and bringing them into compliance. Thank you. So. Closing remarks, Richard? Yes, so um, five of the 11 uh, supervisors are those that have signed on to this. The others, the other more progressive, left-leaning um, supervisors have not signed on to this. Uh, and there's a reason uh, that they don't want to harm a very young business, which what would it do? It would raise the prices to the point that consumers would be forced to potentially go back to the black market. Now, I just want to bring up as well that around the state, other jurisdictions, other cities, other counties are actually lowering the tax because it's been harmful to the cannabis industry. And that is where I stand as well. For example, CBS News, Colorado, Washington State have lowered it. Marijuana has been, uh, the, the, um, the, uh, they've lowered it in, in, um, in down in San Jose area. In San Luis Obispo has been lowered. Uh, all, even over in Berkeley has been lowered. So around the area, we are seeing the trend now to reverse the tax. We don't need to be putting a tax on here because the ultimate um, uh, two things that will happen is it will hurt the cannabis industry and it will force then those consumers, those who consume, to go back to the black market. Thank you. And thank you both for your comments and for your time. Thank you. We hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco Elections website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available starting October 9th at City Hall, Monday through Friday, from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can also vote at City Hall on the two weekends before Election Day from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, November 6th.